right, guys, so everybody has uh, their weight class, right? You can back it up from that with every athlete, every parent out there that's got a kid and has some dream of what the kid's going to do. Every, every child has a sport where they're going to do better in this sport than they are in that sport. It just matches up mentally and physically. But every fighter, every athlete also has a weight class. And I will tell you this, I, I was at the AKA yesterday, okay? I went over there to do a workout um, with, with Cormier. And uh, first off, back up, AKA, nicest gym by tenfold that I've ever seen in my entire life, let alone step footed. This thing is humongous. It's in a strip mall. It's got beautiful advertising. It's a corner space. It's two stories. They must have 15 rooms in that place. They must have 15 rooms between aerobics rooms, bag rooms, wrestling rooms, jujitsu rooms, um, weightlifting rooms, incredible showers, incredible locker rooms. I feel like I, I owe this to them to point this out. I just had such a great experience there. But I walked in and go, my, my good, I didn't know any MMA gym in the world ran this well and was this uh, large and organized and... So at any rate, go back to the weight club. I, got, I, I diverged there for a second, but I had a really great experience. I wanted to say, uh, give a public thank you to the AKA. Uh, but every athlete in combat sports, talking about fighters here, have a weight class. And if they don't get in the right weight class, you're going to have tremendously different results. It's really important to know. And you don't get to test a lot of those. You usually sit down and go, okay, this is my weight class. You then start dieting. Maybe, sometimes that's eating weight. Maybe you're going up in size. Generally, 99% of that. We see guys trying to go down in size, but that's their weight class, and they don't ever look back, and they don't ever test the waters anywhere else, and largely MMA works that way. You get into your division. You get into your bracket with your guys. You don't get a chance to move around. Use Daniel Cormier specifically as an example, but this guy, I'm going to go way back, okay? This guy was the best wrestler in the nation. For sure, he was the best wrestler in the United States of America. He didn't win the national championship. He happened to be in the same weight class as the best wrestler in the world, Kale Sanderson, who went on to prove it, went on to win Olympic gold medals. These guys end up in the same weight class. You're not going to be able to get it straight, right? Only one guy is going to get that, that championship medal. Postseason, Kale decides to stay in that same weight class. Daniel Cormier, and I'm talking uh, post-college career, senior level, Olympic level, wrestling. Daniel Cormier decides, look, I've dealt with that guy enough times. I'm just going to move weight classes. The second he does, he doesn't lose to another American. He makes every team there is, multiple teams, world and Olympic teams. No, Had no problems whatsoever. He then, for one season, Daniel Cormier, for one season, decides to go up even a higher weight class to the heavyweight class. Now, he never wanted to be there. He never planned to stay there. He thought, I'm just going to spend some time. I'm going to get some matches, and I'm just going to weigh whatever I weigh. Take that component off my shoulders and just go out and train and compete. He never lost a match. No American ever beat him. And, you know, he, he had a guy just by example. Steve Mako was in the weight class, who was an Olympian, who was a world medalist, who was a national champion, a title that Daniel did not win in college. Daniel beat him. I mean, just by example, you know, there's really tough guys, and Daniel beat them all, which would make you think back to Daniel's college career. Well, I'm telling you he was the best guy in the country. I'm telling you that he was, but he was in the same bracket with the best guy in the world. He could have, and that was at 184 pounds. By NCAA rules, there were still two weight classes left. He could have gone to 197 pounds. I was a 197 pounder. Top guys in the country, I'll tell you right now. Daniel Cormier would have won the weight. He could have gone up to heavyweight, apparently, based on the fact that he went to heavyweight on the highest of levels and took out some of the best guys in the world, let alone best guys in the country. What I'm trying to make, the weight class is important. And I think there's a lot of guys you could play this game with, but I'm going to play it with Daniel really fast because I grabbed a hold of him last night. Okay, I used to spar with Daniel Cormier when he was a light heavyweight, when I was a light heavyweight. Now we're both up at heavyweight, same, same. He moved weight classes, I made weight classes. Eh, no, not so fast, not so fast. Not the same thing. I grabbed a hold of him last night. It was like meeting a new person. He felt different. His body weight was different. His balance was different. His attitude was different. His demeanor was different. And it just dawned on me, listen, he's found his weight class, okay? Strip him at 205. Go right ahead. 
take 205 away because if he ever tries to go back, people are going to try to talk him out of it, including me. He may not listen to me, but I'm going to bring people in on it. I'll call Ben Askren. I'll, I'll call Kevin Jackson. We'll team up on him. Oh, Daniel, you're looking at this wrong. You probably should have been heavyweight since you were, since you were 20 years old. You probably should have been in the heavyweight class. Would have been an NCAA champion. I don't think anybody would argue that, but you might have been the world or the Olympic champion. Would have been the UFC champion many years ago, right? Was the Strike Force Grand Prix champion. I'll just remind you this at heavyweight. But many times you look at it when a guy goes and has success in a different weight. What's the first thing we think? We think, well, yeah, it must be an easier weight class. That guy was a silver medal down here. He's a gold medal up here. Must be an easier weight class. No, not false. Sometimes a guy just needs to be in the right weight class. And I could just tell you from that brief, brief, grab a hold of him last night. Working on a couple of techniques with him. It was a different guy. It was a different feel. He's at the correct weight class. His whole attitude was different. The way his eyes looked when he talked, his demeanor of not being sucked and drawn out and putting that stress on him, it was just different. I don't want to see him go back to 205 pounds. There's a lot of 205 pounders I want to see him fight. I don't want to see him go back to 205 pounds. He has found the right weight class. And anybody that wants to come up and challenge him, I think they just have to do it there. And of course, what am I talking about? Sure, I am talking about John Jones. In many ways, yes, I do think that that trilogy is going to happen regardless of what Daniel says. Right? Daniel's in one of these points in his career where he's changing his mind a lot. Right, he's changed. He's even said, uh, "Look, I want to do two more fights," and he already did one with Stipe. So he's kind of saying, "Look, I got one left, and give me Lesnar." Um, I, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if he's got X amount of fights or if he's got more of X amount of time. You know, I think to to assume that he's going to be here for at least a year is a very reasonable, very reasonable bet. Uh, bull bet. I think you would probably have safe money if you could put it on more like three years. But Cormier is a guy with a lot of options. He's got, he's got a lot of other opportunities. He's been competing a long time. So let's let's take him at his word a little bit. But yeah, I think I think ultimately I am talking about John Jones. And I am talking about doing it at heavyweight. And I think it does greatly change the scenario, right? They both weighed the same. They both cut some weight. They both got in the ring right around 220. They would get in the ring at different sizes. That's true. And and you could argue whether that size favored Daniel or you could uh, whether you know, the little bit of a speed and being a little lighter would, would favor John Jones. I get all of those things, but that is Daniel's weight class. I would suggest to you in college, his career would have been different had he been in the correct weight class, which is only a hindsight issue, but he's proven that he wasn't in the right weight class to win the gold medal. I believe that his MMA career, as meaningful and incredible as it's been, I think he should have been at heavyweight. And that was just my experience, not only from looking at his record, looking at what he's done at heavyweights, looking at his success at heavyweights, but grabbing a hold of him. It was a different feel. It was a different guy. Hearing his attitude, seeing the way he was living, I mean, his jovialness, it was different. And it's important guys are at the right weight. And I really hope also, in conjunction with just sharing the thought, I do hope we see a lot more Daniel. I do hope that he is uh, that he reneges on his statement that I'm going to do one more fight. I hope that he does multiple more, more fights because uh, the, the, he really needs to show the world what he can do, and and he needs to show at the correct weight class. Which for him, my opinion and my experience, and I've known him a long time, it's at heavyweight.